Oh, I bet you wonder where we're going to go now. King? Crown? Yes, we're still studying the kings and the kings of Israel. As you recall, the first king was King Saul, and he was not that very good of a king, you know? And so God picked another man named David. We already went over all of that, but just a little bit review to know about David was that David was a shepherd boy. A shepherd boy that, in fact, went in to, to fight the giant for King Saul, actually, and for all of Israel, with a slingshot. <laughs> and he did kill that giant. You know the story. But um, King David did have some flaws. Although God called him a man after his own heart. We know that, that David fell into sin a couple of times and a couple of issues. He also had a hard time because he had five wives and his children didn't always get along. And we know if we read, read in the Bible that his son Absalom actually went against and David had to fight against his own son. That must have been awful terrible for him to do that we know and then we see we also see um, his son Adonai, Adonijah anointed himself king without even consulting um, David when David was dying but David anointed his son Solomon the son of he and Bathsheba to be the next king and that's where we're, we're going to go on before I do so, though, David had a big idea. I call the big idea. He thought, I want to build a temple for the Ark of the Covenant. I want to build a magnificent, a place where God will come and abide in Jerusalem. And he thought, this would be great. I, I would want to do this with all my heart. And he consulted he consulted God and Nathan the prophet came and told him that he wouldn't be able to do it but that his son would he also prophesied um, for King David that out out of his lineage out of his um, sons and great grandsons and stuff would come the Messiah how how sweet is that David's heart was touched but David did gather all the riches and all the things that he needed to build the temple. In fact, David, the main builder of the temple, one of the main builders of the temple, was Hiram, and he was from the city of Tyre. Remember we went over Tyre? Well, his mother was actually an Israelite um, from the tri tribe of Naphtali. But Hiram was a good friend of David, and Solomon did um, bring Hiram in to help design the temple and we'll go on more about that in just a little bit but first I wanted to talk about Solomon you see um, David was when David was had reigned for 40 years and he was 70 years old he brought in um, his son Solomon and he talked to him as his son and being the next ruler can imagine Solomon probably got a little you know uptight about it thinking wow I'm pretty young and I have this big job this huge job of being king how am I gonna do this you can wonder well um, Solomon had this uh, vision or a dream where God showed God showed up for him and God told Solomon that he would give him anything that he w asked for Solomon specifically had a great request. He asked for wisdom. Wisdom in ruling the nation of Israel, God's people. Well, God said, well, said, uh, yes, he totally wanted to give him wisdom, but also because he of his heart and how he asked for only wisdom, not riches, not glory, not long life. Not all these other things, but God blessed the Solomon with those too. You see, Solomon um, would not only be the wisest, wisest man who ever lived. Um, in fact, 
he wrote 3,000 proverbs and 1,005 songs that we know about. Very, very um, wise in all that he said. If you read the proverbs, they're written by Solomon. He was also the richest. They said silver was common and everything was lined for gold. He even drank out of gold and ate with gold utensils. Can you imagine that? And people came from miles around to see King Solomon. God had truly, truly blessed him. You can imagine, we can take that in, in our lives too. You see, if we seek the Lord with all of our heart and not lean on our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledge him, he'll direct our paths. You see, God also will give us the desires of our heart because he knows our heart better than we do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things shall be added unto you. That's what Jesus said. If we seek God first, we will be blessed. Not asking for riches and glory and honor and all these things, or, or long, even long life, or even good health, all these things. But God, as he looks at our heart, and we want to seek him first, his blessings will come. And so Solomon did. Solomon was the wisest. He did rule Israel. And God had him build the temple. Although God doesn't really abide in temples, he said. But he looked at David's heart. And he thought, yes, yes, this will be good. Hmm. So Solomon was the one to construct this grand, grand temple. As you see in your book on, well, let's see, it says 1 Kings um, in 12, 12 uh, 1 Kings 2, 12 through 13. I want to read that to you. It says, Behold, I have given you a wise, discerning heart, so that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall there be one like you after. I also have given you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that there will be will not be any among the kings like you all of your days. What a blessing. What a blessing for Solomon. And then it goes on, it talks about the Queen of Sheba coming. And here's here's the quote from the Bible, from the, what she said. It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. Nevertheless, I did not believe the report until I had seen, and behold, not only half was told to me, you exceed in wisdom and prosperity. First Kings 10, 6 through 7. Oh, Solomon, he had, his throne was, an, was an, made of ivory. He had 10 golden lions on the sides of his throne, and two were his armrests. <laughs> you can imagine seeing that. Such beautiful. He also had pets like apes and monkeys and, you know, and camels and, and elephants. And, you know, he, he had people come to entertain him. But he also had a thousand wives, which really God did not look on too kindly. And that's what later on drove his wives drove him back into into idol worship. So that's a sad part of Solomon's life, because he had married the Pharaoh's daughter, and um, she was the Egyptian, and she wanted to have her own gods. You know, pretty sad that Solomon went around went along with some of his wives. But anyway. I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to talk about this temple.